What's up guys, hope you're having a chill day. Welcome to another quick tip and today we're gonna to be going over seven of my most favorite Adobe Illustrator tools to use to create those really interesting design styles that you see nowadays in the real world from wavy warpy type to beautiful gradients to zigzag lines that could create these really amazing patterns or even to rough in type that looks hand drawn. So let's get started. Tool number one, warp type effect. So this effect you've probably seen on a lot of YouTube thumbnails or trendy type on advertising posters about this wavy warpy type. It's super easy to make and what we want to do is type in hello to make that warpy type. Let's put that type on a black background so it's just more contrast and we're just going to draw a black square. Let's bring that hello upwards and turn it white and let's change that font to make it a little thicker right now it's kind of thin and then what we want to do next is go to effect drag down, go to warp, and then click on flag. So as you click on flag, it'll give you this warp option graph where you could play with the bend mode. So as you drag it to the left, you can see that the left side raises more. And as you drag it to the right, the right side raises more to create that really warpy wave-like type. And that's pretty much it, super simple. Let's drag and duplicate that downwards and let's make it into an outline. And then let's create a really cool pattern that I've seen on a Nike campaign before where it has these really cool wavy infinite duplicate patterns. Let's put it a little closer together and let's just keep on dragging it and duplicating down. So as we drag one, we could continue to duplicate it by commanding it. So as you can see, it just continues to duplicate downwards and let's just drag that up. Let's duplicate one to in the bottom to fill it up. And then we're gonna drag it and duplicate it to the left side and then right side as well. And then we're just gonna do another one on the right to fill in that gap. And then let's apply a square clipping mask so then the outside um, running edges can be cleaner. And as you can see, it has this really cool free flowing wave pattern to it. And then let's duplicate that again and play with some funky colors. That orange looks really nice and let's play with the colors on the text too. So we want to change the text color too but because it, some are outlined and some are solid it becomes a little difficult to change it all at once. So what we want to do is outline the stroke so it becomes a solid similar to the filled in hello. Click outline stroke. Once you click that it becomes an outline and then you could select all of them and then just select the solid color now. And yeah that was it. That was a wave tool. Super simple to use and definitely have fun with it. Next up is zigzag tool. So I've always wondered how people made those really cool squiggly lines and I thought you had to hand by hand create those waves and mesh it together. And this method just took so long to do and it's crazy super simple. Let me show you how. Let's make a couple lines and see how many different examples we can make with that zigzag effect. What we want to do is select one of those lines and go to effect, distort, and then all the way down it says zigzag. Let's click on that. And as you can see, it already gives you that zigzaggy shape and we can really play with the different sizes. And on the bottom where it says points, we could click corner, which is a little more hard edged or smooth, which curves those edges. So let's click on smooth. And as you can see, it creates those wavy lines. Ridges per segment makes it feel like there's a lot more to that line. And let's play with the sizing and stretch it larger. It gets super large and abstract and you know, just toggle between it and have fun with it. So after that first one set, let's click on the second one and let's make this a little more hard edge and smaller. The next one, let's do something a little more funky and hard edge, like a thunderbolt. So let's bump up the size and lower the rigid per segment. And then we're just gonna keep on playing with it and seeing how much versions we could do. This one feels kind of wonky. And then this one's a little more like a water wave to it. What we wanna do next is make some crazy patterns to it. So let's grab that first line and then let's make it diagonal. And let's play with the rigid per segment segments let's make it a little lower in the size too and then let's just duplicate it from the left and from the right as well what we want to do is make a, a mask around it and clean it up a bit so the edges don't free flow off it makes this really cool optical illusion pattern and let's take that same pattern and let's duplicate it onto the right again and let's change that pattern and play with the points so instead of smooth let's make it cornered so it's a hard edge and it can feel like a maze pattern to it so let's bump up the size a little bit more and as you can see it creates this really beautiful kind of hard edge pattern to it, which it looks like multiple protruding squares or even staircases whatever you might think it might be and let's drag that pattern again and make it even more crazier and have like a lightning bolt kind of David Bowie style pattern to it so what we want to do is select all of those strokes let's play with the size and up it up even further how much we could go even to 99 points that might be the maximum and as you can see it creates this really fun and exciting pattern to it and that was the zigzag tool super fun 
Next one is rough and tool. So the rough and tool is a really useful tool if you're trying to make a shape or typography look kind of hand drawn and sketchy. So we're gonna type in rough in. Let's enlarge it and click on a font that we like. Sharp grotesque is always a good font to use. And let's put on a color background so the contrast is a little more heightened. So what we wanna do is click on the type, go to effects on the top, and then scroll down to distort and transform. The third one on the row is rough and we're gonna click on that. So already auto effects and gives you a really funky and exaggerated rough into it what we want to do is make it more elegant and subtle so let's play with the size of it let's make that one and then for details click one as well and as you can see without detail it gives it a bit more like spongy slimy feeling let's give detail a hundred and as you can see it gives it a little more like a jagged edges almost like it's frozen or it has fur to it so we can just really have fun and play with that let's make details go into 16 and then the sizing we can make it even smaller even a point something percentage so let's put 0.35 and as you can see it's starting to slowly get there um 0.15 let's make it 0.15 and then let's make it 32 and the more you work on it and play with the numbers the more you'll get the desired outcome that you want so definitely keep on tweaking it and putting your twist to it and as we zoom in it feels really good it does feel like a painterly hand-drawn style to it let's duplicate that to the right and instead of type let's play with shapes so i'm gonna draw a circle let's add a star let's put a triangle and also a square Square and some kind of hexagon. We're gonna go to effect, we're gonna click roughen. And as you can see, it gives you this really cool auto set style and effect that could be kind of interesting for whatever work you're trying to do. But for size, let's play with that, make it super subtle and detail. Let's give it a little more elegance and bring that down. So it has like a very subtle jagged edge. And let's duplicate that and have a little more fun with it and go more crazy. So we're gonna put that size down and the detail up. So it gives it this really firm very abstract kind of artsy look to these shapes that really change the form in a way. So as you can see, those are three different examples of the Ruffin tool and you know, have fun with these. It's a, it's a cool tool to use. Pathfinder tool. So the Pathfinder tool is a super essential tool to use whenever you're designing, creating logos, cutting things up, meshing them together and merging it. So let's have a lot of fun with this and see where it goes. So the first one, we have two circles and let's make an eyeball. As we have those two circles, what we wanna do is mesh those two together and cut out that middle shape that will create that really nice almond sized eye. So let's put them together. And what we wanna do is on the right hand corner, you'll have that Pathfinder tool. And the first one is that cut tool so press that tool and we're gonna cut that and let's delete those top and bottom ones as we don't need that we just need that middle shape and as you can see it nicely isolates that shape so what we want to do is create that pupil so we're gonna just put that in and let's create that little shine on that pupil itself and we're gonna offset that to give it another layer of shadow that can help really highlight that eyeball and what we want to do is make that a darker hue and see where that goes the next one, we're gonna have fun and cut up this a letter so what we want to do is draw some lines just create a crosshair now we're gonna select that pathfinder tool to cut it up now as you can see what's nice about this tool is you can kind of separate it into different sections let's try another one where it's a little more extreme let's do multiple lines let's duplicate that and then let's press that pathfinder tool and then we, as you can see we could drag it out a little bit more and let's play with the sizing let's make one up let's play one down and create that pattern where it looks like it's separated and almost like it's cut up into little tiny chunks and pieces and then another one we could do is a checkered pattern to it so let's duplicate that row and make it in a horizontal as well and then let's press that pathfinder tool to cut it up and as you can see we're cutting out checkered like patterns to it and it creates this really fun and interesting effect on this type itself where it, some pieces are out and some pieces are in last one is an illustration and what we want to do is make that blue rather surrounding this person's head we want that color to just be in his skin tone and his hair as well so let's click on the illustration head and then also the circle and then let's click that pathfinder tool and then as you can see once we cut it up we could take away that outer circle and it's just surrounding his face so what's cool about this tool is after we isolated it each section has its own color that you could change so let's make his skin tone like a different color and really play with that. And yeah, this is a, a really useful tool to use. And this is the Pathfinder tool. 
Next one is offset pad tool. So offset tool is a really useful tool in terms of giving negative space around your illustration or design. For example, we have the word hello. And if we want to make it a sticker, sometimes the sticker press people say we need to have some white surrounding it for it to better be cut to make it into a sticker itself. So select the word hello, make it into a compound pad. So why do we want to make it a compound pad? It's because it groups everything together. So when we offset the pad, it creates it as a whole, right? It doesn't individually make each section its own layer versus just the whole thing itself what we want to do is click object scroll down to compound path and select make so after we have this we can go to path and then offset path and as you can see it gives you this little uh, menu bar that we could play with the offset the joins the meter limit and preview so the main thing you can play with is just the offset just how big you want that negative space to be around as we make it larger it goes more and as we make it smaller it goes less I think a good size would be around this six point. So we're going to press OK and let's make that white. It gives it this really nice surrounding white shape that we can use to make it into a cool sticker. Let's make it a little round on the edges to give it a more warm feeling. And what's cool about this is we could change it the colors as well. Let's just make it inverse where the background's black and the type is white. So the next one is this icon. And what we want to do is create this really cool emanating layer to it. So it's like this repeating of him getting larger and larger. So what we want to do is make this a compound path again. So we're going to make that. And then we're going to go back object path and offset and then let's give it eight points and then let's make that white and what we want to do is continuously duplicate this layer so let's just keep on repeating that in and out in and out in and out you know this is a little tedious but there's probably a shortcut but we're just going to do this for right now and then after we have that we're just going to individually select the colors and as you can see it gives this really funky and fun pattern so what we want to do next is just draw a square and clean up the edges that are flowing out of the composition and as you can see that's looking really cool all right the last one is a couple of shapes and same we're going to make a compound path and then what we want to do is offset the path again and then this time let's make it super thin we're going to just continue duplicate that let's make a clippy mat so it's very clean and voila there you have it this is the offset path definitely have fun with this go on with your bad self and go crazy with this tool because it can be really fun and give your design a lot of life and energy to it gradient mesh tool the gradient mesh tool is a pretty amazing tool for coming up with random shapes and colors it can spark some awesome ideas just by randomly drawing and dragging points up and down let's draw a white square and let's locate the gradient mesh tool icon on the toolbar on the left screen area to activate the gradient mesh tool we have to click on any area of that white square we're going to click on the center and as you can see it divided the area into four different cubes each point you could select different colors to activate that zone let's click on the top left and add in that light blue let's click on the top right to activate that hot pink and then the bottom right let's make it yellow and then we can select all four dots on the bottom left square and then select the green and as you can see it kind of spreads and diversifies into that so that's what's cool about the gradient mesh tool it really is a great way to mesh colors together and see where it takes you so let's select the middle and let's kind of drag in like that light pink in between and let's just play around and see where the colors take me what's also cool about gradient mesh is it's really flexible and you can really drag that middle point and any points around and just play with where that shape can lead and morph into so let's kind of tweak it a little bit and give it this little airy aerodynamic spacey atmospheric feeling to that so that's looking really cool i think we got that down so let's duplicate that slide and next up i think what would be cool is is we could play with an airbrush effect and make it like this abstract landscape to it so let's click on the mesh tool and divide this white square into four different columns so we're gonna click on the top left and then the middle and then bottom right to activate those zones and you can see it divided it into four different sections so let's select the bottom section and give it a light blue to represent water let's select that second to last one to give it green to represent grass and then let's select the next column and give it brown to represent this idea of mountains and the top let's make it a light blue 
and then the very top let's make it white to represent the sky and as we have this going we could then start meshing it and playing around giving it shape so as you can see for the mountainscape let's give it like pointy tips and we're just gonna keep on playing with that and see where it takes us it could be super random but what's cool about this is you could constantly work on it to give it more of a smoother feeling and have those colors mesh in well or either smooth or harsh so let's keep on tweaking those and then let's push it down let's bring that up a little bit point it outwards and yeah this looks like a pretty cool airbrush effect landscape that we did really quickly so definitely give this one a try it's a super fun tool to use Next one is Image Trace. So Image Trace is a very useful tool in case you have a photo that you want to vectorize and see where that could lead. Have it really quickly draw and auto draw versus tracing it. This could be a very useful and effective tool to have. So I added in a couple of images that we could use to test the Image Trace tool to see how great it could be. So the first image is a picture of Wes Montgomery, one of my most favorite jazz musicians. And let's see how the Image Trace tool can be effective on an image itself. So what we want to do is click on that image and go to on the top object image trace and then make and expand and usually for more complex images it'll take a little bit longer to see how that looks and then voila as we see that it automatically image traces it and makes it a vector and this could be applied really well in terms of making a logo sending it off to get like laser cut or just screen printing itself so a really useful tool to have versus you having to really hand draw in that image itself this could also be limiting because sometimes there's details that are missing but you can't really control that because it's based on the image trace algorithm and whatever they pick up and want to vectorize itself so just be wary of that as well. The next one is Cowboy Bebop, a super amazing anime series that if you haven't checked it out yet, you should definitely check out. So let's go to object, image trace and make. And as quickly as that, it became vectorized. So really fun. And then next one is just a simple kind of interesting warp pattern that we're gonna image trace that. So the last one is an example of an illustration. Let's see how well this one can be vectorized too. And yeah, wow, it did a pretty good job. So what's cool about these guys is after you have it all vectorized, what we can do is start colorizing it just for fun. So let's, we're gonna select everything and let's just play with the different colors. And you can see how well and easy it is to just change the colors. So this one, the Cowboy Bebop one, let's make it red. The next one, let's have like a trippy blue and the crocodile itself, let's give it a wild magenta color just to see how that looks. And just as simple as that, that was the image trace tool. If you made it this far, thanks again for watching. These are seven of my most favorite Adobe Illustrator tools to use to help jumpstart you to create some really funky and beautiful aesthetics. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you want to see more videos like these, please subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.